A little over a year ago, I jettisoned everything stable about my life at the same time. I quit my career as a classroom teacher. I quit my boyfriend of eight years. And for the first time in my life, I had no plan. My father says that in times of upheaval, the universe has a way of revealing to us whether we're on the right path. And my job was to be open and watchful for a guiding sign. This sounds great, but I soon find that the universe does not work on my schedule. So after a summer teaching sailing in Maine, my contract is up, I have no job to return to in the fall, and there is no logical next step. So I sit in a cafe in coastal Maine, staring at my laptop. Two browser tabs open on my screen. One, a website pairing able-bodied sailors with boats headed to faraway places. Two, an, an application to a radio editing program. Will I be Lizzie Peabody, world sailor and adventurer? Or Lizzie Peabody, storyteller and audio producer? And that is when I hear the voice. Are you looking to crew on a boat? I look over my shoulder and there's this man I have never seen before. He's small, he has this bird-like build, he's wearing a tattered camp counselor t-shirt. He looks to be in his early 30s and he has a face that I trust instinctively. I'm sailing from Newfoundland to Cape Cod. My partner just started a grad program so I'm going the rest of the sail solo, you wanna join? Now I passed first grade so I know you don't get in cars with strangers but this feels different. What are the odds that he would walk into this cafe in this town and ask me to sail with him? No, this is my sign, delivered with a big red bow and wearing tevas. If, if I say no to this, I might regret it for the rest of my life. So I say, coolly, okay. And we agree to go sailing later on that day so he can test my skills. A couple hours later, I'm waiting on the dock for the launch ride out to his boat. And as a precaution, I do move the harbor master's cell phone number into my speed dial, just in case. But everything is off to a great start. I climb aboard, and right away, he has me execute this complex sailing maneuver, which I do with panache, and he is duly impressed. And we ride this beautiful breeze out of the harbor and into the bay. And I'm filled with conviction that I am in the right place at the right time, and I am going to follow the universe's breadcrumbs to my answer. And then the wind dies. It gets very hot. It gets very still. But this gives us a chance to talk and get to know one another. He tells me about his passion for contradancing and the environment. I tell him about my utter lack of direction in my life. And I congratulate myself on saying yes and finding myself in a situation I wouldn't ordinarily be in. And as though he can read my mind, he gets this thoughtful look in his eye. He leans in and then he says, how do you feel about being naked? I don't know what to say. It's really hot, we should go swimming. How do you feel about being naked? I'm wearing my bathing suit, I say, I'm good. Okay, how do you feel about me being naked? <laughs> so I'm saying yes to the universe. I'm being open to the unknown. He asked permission. That is polite, that's good manners. <laughs> And when you think about it, what's that weird about being naked anyway? I mean, maybe I'm more closed-minded than I thought. Plus, from way out here, nobody can see us anyway. So I say, coolly, go for it. And he does. He takes off his shirt, he takes off his pants, then he takes off his boxers, revealing his sort of scrawny body. And then he turns and struts to the front of the boat, reaching up to pull the elastic which binds his greasy brown hair, which falls over his thin shoulders. And as he spreads his arms for a dramatic dive off the bow of the boat, I realize 
he looks exactly like Jesus. <laughs> As a child, I had one crippling, irrational fear of Jesus. <laughs> Something about the depiction of the crucifixion haunted me to the point where I had to leave public places if I was near anyone who reminded of him even a little bit. And here I am on a boat with naked Jesus. <laughs> So as Jesus climbs out of the water and towels off, I'm determined not to let him know that anything is amiss because I don't want to make him uncomfortable. <laughs> he goes down below decks and he brings back a guitar. I didn't know Cat Stevens wrote that many songs. <laughs> The guitar does cover most of his still nude body, but I sit and I gaze at the horizon looking for any sign of wind. And I'm congratulating myself for handling this extremely well. There is a reason that the universe has orchestrated this immersion therapy for me, and I am going to get through it. This is happening for a reason. Naked Jesus exhausts his repertoire of Quaker folk songs and Cat Stevens and puts his guitar down and turns to me with another serious look. Is it all right with you if I flirt with you relentlessly? <laughs> okay, this is a weird question. And I am not at all attracted to naked Jesus. But it's been eight years since I've flirted with anyone, and the idea of flirting is scary almost as scary as being this close to Jesus. <laughs> I could stand to brush up on my verbal banter, and we have nothing but time here. I could stand to practice. So I think, what the hell? I'm going to rip this Band-Aid off. And I say, coolly, yeah, you can flirt with me. I'm standing at the wheel. There's no wind, but there's always hope. And right away, <laughs> right away, he comes opposite me, and he puts his small, leathery hands on mine. And as I'm saying something completely inane, like, are those ropes nylon? His face is looming closer and closer to mine, and I can smell his unwashed hair. And then his lips are on my forehead. He's kissing my forehead, and a lock of his matted hair falls into my face, and it brushes against my mouth. And the reality of my situation hits me all at once. This is my worst nightmare. <laughs> I am stuck on a boat from which I cannot leave with my worst phobia in the flesh. And I've been saying yes to the universe, but this is bullshit. This cannot be the plan. I realize I'm actually saying yes to a well-trod path that leads to a place I have no desire to go with this man. But we're headed there, unless something changes. So taking a leaf out of my college consent handbook, I say, stop. I changed my mind. <laughs> I am uncomfortable. I don't want you to flirt with me, and I don't want you to touch me. And he says, that's real communication. <laughs> We're being really real right now. Take me home. I say, I, it's getting dark. I need to get home. His motor is broken, but it works in reverse. <laughs> so we reverse motor through the bay, into the harbor, me and tiny, leathery, naked Jesus. <laughs> Sadly, slowly, back to the dock from where we'd come. And as we pull up, he turns to me for a final time and he says, you're a great sailor. I'd love it if you would come with me on the sail to Cape Cod. And I say, coolly, I'll think about it and I'll let you know. But as I step off that boat, I know that I will be Lizzie Peabody, audio producer. <laughs>